What's up internet? My name is Kyle, back with another video about cameras, tech, and all that good stuff. And if you haven't noticed in my hand here, we are going to talk about SD cards and hopefully this video can serve as the ultimate guide for you buying an SD card for either your Sony A5100, A6000, A6100, 6300, 6400, 6500, or 6600 camera. Sony, why do you do this to us? Okay, so all jokes and SD cards aside, Sony has a bunch of APS-C sensor sized cameras and they all share common things when it comes to SD cards. Okay, and right off the bat, I wanna say SD cards can be a little confusing to you know somebody who's just getting into photography or anything like that. So this is going to be two separate things in this video. I'm going to first recommend a couple cards that I think are the best performers for the money um, for the Sony A6000 lineup of cameras. We're just gonna say A6K series of cameras from now on throughout the video. And that's talking about all the cameras I mentioned, A5100 all the way up to 6600. Okay, now that we got that covered. Also going to then, after recommending a bunch of cards, talk about the things that are on the front of an SD card. So if you wanna know what those numbers mean, and if you wanna know what cards not to waste your money on because the A6K lineup of cameras has some limitations when it comes to speeds and things like that, it's pretty simple, it's not too complicated, but I think looking at all those acronyms and trying to do the research and stuff like that could get a little confusing and you could get a little deeper into it than you want to. So that's what this video is for, just tell you what you need to know and recommend some cards. Affiliate links for everything that I talk about in this video, both cards I recommend and some crazy high capacity cards and things like that will be in the description. So if you're interested in buying anything I talk about in this video, Look down below, affiliate links galore. Okay, so the first SD card comes in around 11-ish dollars and it is the PNY 64 gigabyte Elite X UHS-1 SD card. I know, descriptions for SD cards get kind of long, but we'll go into that later on in the video. Now this is the first because it's the cheapest. Um, the third card that I'm gonna recommend will be like the flagship card I recommend. A couple things to note about this card is that it's really the cheapest one from one of the more reputable brands that I found that I would recommend. You can find cheap cards from brands that I've never heard of, that you've never heard of, that a lot of people have never heard of because there's a bunch of different manufacturers just trying to throw cards out there. Um, I'm gonna talk about PNY, Sony, and SanDisk. Those are the most reputable brands that are still making SD cards. Lexar no longer makes cards. Um, and Sony also only makes their high-end cards. They don't make their low-end cards any longer. So we're really gonna just talk about Sony, PNY, and SanDisk. And PNY has the cheapest one with good enough speeds, up to 100 megabytes per second read speeds, and then up to 30-ish megabytes per second write speeds. This is just, it's the cheapest one that I would recommend someone to start out with. Okay, the second card on this list comes in around 16 bucks right now in August 2020. I believe it's full price is $23. And that's the SanDisk Extreme Model uh, 64 gigabyte SDXC UHS-1 SD card. This card is a bit faster than the previous card. The read speed are up to 150 megabytes per second, and the write speed is up to 60 megabytes per second. However, we'll get into write speed limitations later on in the video. So really the benefits of this card versus the PNY card is that it is a more reputable brand and the read speeds are quicker. So that is when you're offloading your photos. Okay, and then moving on to the third, the most expensive, but in my opinion, my go-to recommendation for people who are getting into photography, especially if they have like a Sony A6000 series camera, is the SanDisk Extreme Pro 64 gigabyte. And this has up to 170 megabytes per second read speed, and then up to 90 megabytes per second write speed. This comes in around $20 right now. I think it normally sells for $25 or even more than that, but right now it's at a really good price. And overall, this is, the better card, but again, it's really just in read speeds. All three of these cards will perform the same, essentially the same, 
inside of any of the Sony A6K model cameras. Now the reason for that is that there is a write speed limitation inside the Sony A6K model cameras. It's around like 34 megabytes per second. So when you see cards with the description saying the write speed is up to 90 or up to 100 plus megabytes per second, your camera, the Sony A6K lineup that we've talked about, will not benefit from that. The read speeds, on the other hand, you will benefit from when you're plugging your SD card into a computer with say USB 3.0 slot, it's going to read that card extremely fast. If you want as big as you can go essentially is like around one terabyte. I'm not sure if there's anything bigger than that, but you can look at SanDisk for a one terabyte SD card if you're into that sort of thing. Also, as I mentioned earlier, Sony really stopped making the lower uh, capacity or the UHS-1 cards. Sony has their tough series of SD cards, which apparently can survive virtually anything. They're like the cockroach of the SD card industry, I guess you would say. So I just realized I didn't have these little cool lights on. So color boost all of a sudden. Also, I kicked my tripod. So hopefully we are back to normal. But anyway, let's continue with the video. Where was I? Oh, so I didn't recommend any 32 gigabyte cards. So let's get into why I didn't recommend any of the smaller capacity cards and let's talk about what is on the front of an SD card. So here are two examples of SD cards. So the one on the left is your 32 gigabyte. This is just a random SanDisk card that I picked. And then on the right is a card that I actually recommend, which is the 64 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro. So the 32 gigabyte card on the left has the letters SD HC on it and I'll zoom in so you guys see what I'm talking about. SDHC file system for SD cards maxes out at 32 gigabytes and that limitation right there prevents you from using the XAVCS mode in video on the Sony A6000 model cameras. So I don't really feel like it's good to recommend a 32 gigabyte or lower card. You won't be able to unlock the best video capability of your Sony camera. Of course, if you find a 32 gigabyte card that's like super cheap and you can buy a bunch of them, knock yourself out. Just know that you won't be able to use the highest form of video recording on your Sony A6K model camera, but by all means, the you know MP4 and the other versions, they do good enough video, it's just the XAVCS is the best video you can record on the camera. One of the next things I wanna point out is the U3. As you can see, it's on both of these cards. It's pretty common nowadays for the U3 to be on the front of a card. This is the class of the card, and it basically means that you can do 30 megabytes per second constant with video recording. Okay, and then there's two other things. Um, there's the 10, which is in a circle. You don't really need to worry about that. Just, you know, higher is better. You want the 10. And then also the V30, um, you will see on UHS type two cards, you'll see V60, V90. Next thing I wanna talk about is read and write speed. So on the front of every SD card, ever pretty much, the read speed is on the front of the card. The read speed is how fast your SD card is capable of being read, which happens when you're offloading your pictures to say your computer, your laptop, your iPad, wherever your card is going into that slot, if it's like a USB 3.0 slot, will be able to take advantage of higher read speeds. So it depends on the slot that you're using. So don't get crazy excited when you see super fast read speeds. Obviously that's important when you're trying not to wait days and days when your photos are being offloaded, but it has nothing to do with the in-camera performance of the SD card interacting with your camera. I wish they would put both the read and the write speed. The write speed, you're gonna have to look, say you're on Amazon, in the description, just do like a command F or a control F, type in write and you should be able to find the write speed. However, write speed technically isn't that important at the end of the day with the Sony A6K lineup of cameras. And that's because there is a cap inside the A6K cameras around 34 megabytes per second write speed. If you bought the most expensive Sony Tough card out there, put it in your Sony A6000, it wouldn't perform that much better, like after you take a burst of photos and you're waiting for the buffer to clear than say a $20 SD card. I think that's a key thing when shopping for SD cards. I feel like people just look for these speeds and they're like, oh, I want this fast read and write speed. Well, 
you need to know the camera that you're using. Okay, so the next thing I wanna point out on the front of the SD card is the little Roman numeral. You see it on both of these cards. It's an I for one. So these cards, as you would see like on Amazon, say they are a UHS type one card. There are two types, there's UHS one and UHS two. UHS two basically is a more advanced card it has more pieces on the back and they're a lot faster, both in read and write speed. But you may have guessed it, the Sony A6K lineup of cameras are UHS-1 type card accepting cameras. Now, of course, if you want to, you can buy a UHS-2 type SD card and put it in, say, your Sony E6000, 6300, whichever you know Sony camera you wanna put it in, but you will only benefit when you're using your SD card outside of the camera and you know your computer is reading your SD card probably at a higher rate than a UHS type one SD card. But as far as in camera, the buffer time that you have to wait and everything like that, there will be virtually no benefit. It will be too small to notice because some UHS type one cards reach the limit of the write speed within the Sony A6K cameras. Okay, so I think that is pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope you guys learned a little bit. I know I did uh, when I first got a Sony A6000 and I was looking at well, like, what's the fastest card I could get that would benefit me. And then I learned about these things and I was like, oh, okay, so I don't need to spend $100 on an SD card or something like that. So hopefully this was very helpful. And it, like I said, there's affiliate links down below for anything that I recommend. There's some uh, crazy things down below I just thought I would put for fun, like the one terabyte card. I felt compelled to make a video like this because I myself was looking for another SD card. Um, I've been really liking 128 gigabyte version cards lately because I do a lot of you know YouTube videos and stuff like that and I don't delete stuff all the time. So it just makes sense for me to have higher capacity cards. Oh, one final thing before I forget, micro SD cards, I will also link those down in the description. Really, my opinion on micro SD cards may be different than other people, but uh, I like using the full SD cards in my camera here, the Sony A6100, because it's less parts. I've used the adapters before and everything like that, like this one right here, and uh, they break, or I've had them break on me, like the little lock mechanism. So I just prefer using the full SD cards, but say for my, um, my Zoom microphone, it needs a micro SD card. So I have one for that. And you know, when I used to use GoPros and stuff like that. So by all means, micro SD cards are really great to use if you need them for your camera or whatever. So I will link those down in the description as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. All recommended cards down in the description. Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode. Later.